All right, hello. In this video, we are going to model this hammer. I think it's a good idea for you to model things that you can find around the house, mostly just so that you are able to get good reference. This is uh, just some photos that I took with my phone of a hammer. And I'm not gonna model all the super detail stuff. I'm probably also not gonna be able to get this down in 10 minutes, so we're gonna have to uh, do a, a couple of videos for this, I think. But it's not going to be too complicated, and I think it'll be hopefully I'll be able to, be able to show you a couple new uh, new features that we haven't played with too much. But I'm going to go ahead and start with the top of it here. So I'm just going to start with a polygon cube. Tap the F key to zoom in. So that's going to be basically kind of this area up here is what I'm what I'm going to begin playing with. So I need to have an extrusion going this way, and I need to have an extrusion that I can eventually kind of have going this way. And the uh, I can just sort of start and decide like this thickness here, that's going to be my cube. So I'm just kind of eyeballing this as my, my starting point here. So I'm going to grab this face. I'll go to uh, the Edit Mesh tool here. And I'm going to extrude. And then pull in just a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and slide that face out. I'm going to tap the G key, which will give me another extrusion. And then I'm going to tap the G key again for what will ultimately be this part. And to make that happen, I'm going to go ahead and insert, grab my little mesh tools. We'll insert an edge loop here. I'm going to face mode. Try that again. So I said you can select the the ring of edges by doing shift double click. You can also do that with faces. So that's the same thing as if I had just selected this edge and then double click this edge, I get this whole ring here. Just go ahead and grab that because what I'm really looking for here are the faces and I'm going to use transform and we'll just kind of poof these out a little bit. And I've been doing everything so that it's still consistent as far as the height and the width being the same. So that means if I tap the three key, you know, we're kind of getting something along these lines, go back to one. I'm going to go ahead and sharpen that, that up a little bit there with another edge loop. So we'll go to insert edge loop here. And I do kind of want to be thinking about the sub D view of this the whole time, because that's ultimately how this is going to finish up. And we can see here, I probably need to support this edge so we get a little bit more of a of an edge there and something to kind of offset that so that it's not just so vertical but we'll get to that stuff in time for now i think i'll go ahead and add another edge there and i think all of the stuff here you're gonna have to go back to face mode i want you to let me select the faces and I'm going to do another transform, but I'm actually just going to push these in. Whoops, let me try that again. Make sure. Some, so I thought for a second I had this face, but it turns out this face. So it's I need to use this different axis here. Okay, we'll tap the three key, kind of see where we're at. Okay, and I'm going to add one more edge loop here. Starting to kind of figure that out a little bit. Let's go ahead and, and pull this stuff down here. So I'm going to grab this face. A right click. Okay, we just got to be in the select menu here. And then I'm going to do an extrude. Whoops, I think I got two faces. Control Z a couple times. I'm going to tap the extrude or G to run the extrude command one more time. So now I'm sort of looking at this stuff here. And I think we can go ahead and start thinking about the top as well. So I'm going to tap the G key to give myself another another edge and then uh, or another face there with extrude. I'm going to grab this edge, slide it up a bit, and then the G key one more time out here. This obviously needs to come down. needs to rotate. Again, be careful not to hit the outer ring. That's going to be just whatever your camera is looking at. You want to make sure that you're, you're operating in a regular world space, especially when you're doing rotations, because otherwise you're going to something that's kind of, kind of odd. And what I want here is I'd like to 
make this face narrower on this edge, but my my little transform gizmo is not oriented to that surface. So if I were to do it, you know, you get some kind of weird thing like this, which actually isn't too bad in this case, but I'm going to show you a better way to do it. I'm going to double click here on the scale tool settings right there. And in my axis orientation, I can set this to component. And when I do that, watch what happens, right? So this is a component, faces, verts, and edges are all components. And you can set the axis orientation so that it actually looks at whatever your component selection is. So if I were to grab this one, you can see I'm getting uh, at least one axis oriented towards the uh, the perpendicular vector on that face there. It doesn't have any idea what the, what the rotation of this face is. Like it doesn't understand this as being anything other than like I'm kind of pointing this way. So you'll always at least have access to the face normal when you're using component, which can be very useful. And in this case, because this, this is still oriented more or less in world space, it can make a smart guess. So now I can go ahead and do something like this. And I'm going to add another edge loop right in the middle. And I'm going to slide this edge so that we are kind of maintaining, I guess this is a middle mouse operation. I don't want to do the whole edge though. Maybe it's because I had too many things selected there. Right, there we go. You can see it's going to snap basically. It's kind of popping there. That's the midline, the midpoint of the line. So we'll do something like that. Grab these verts. Actually, I want to grab these verts. And so here's this kind of important. Well, never mind. I, I think I, I had some other idea there. All right. So let's take a look at our little hammer head now. Tap the three key. So it looks like that, that drop off starts a little bit, uh, a little sooner than I have it. All right, so let's go ahead and put that little split there in the uh, in the back. What I could do pretty easily is I could just grab these edges. Let me make sure I'm in my selection tool here. And I could do a connect. But with the, with the regular connect settings, as we have already discussed, I need to probably turn the edge flow off. But when I do that, I'm going to start to throw off the curving behavior of this top surface on that hammer, which if I if I really wanted to, I don't know that it makes that much difference, but I kind of want to demonstrate something here. So if I get rid of it, you can see I have this nice circular face here and I'd kinda, I kind of want to preserve that. So what I need to do is probably not have an edge that runs all the way down, or I could try doing insert with edge flow. I want to do insert with edge flow. It's still not entirely perfect. I probably need to come over here and take a look at doing this one as well. So now the roundness there is preserved. That's actually probably okay. Right there. So now that we've got this edge loop running down the middle, what I can do, I probably do need to come in and, and make sure that this is uh, not getting too thick back there. You go to the side view, just hold the space bar. I think kind of all this stuff might have gotten a little bit thicker than it needs to be. This as well. So we can turn three on, get to the sub D view. So it's kind of a little more, I think it might actually be curved down a little bit, but whatever, we can kind of, we can dial it in as we continue working on it. But well, let's go ahead and very quickly, just gonna grab these edges here. You can see when you start adding in those, those extra edges, you can start, you find yourself in a situation where you, you're dealing with a lot of kind of smaller edges, which is it's not really ideal, but it's certainly not a big deal. Okay, and from here, I am going to do a bevel. And because I've got my bevel tool selected, I can select the fraction and something like that probably would be just fine. So now I'm going to delete all of these faces. So right now, this is actually a good example of this. If I want to add these to the selection, if I hold shift, I'm going to actually deselect the ones that I already 
had selected. So if I hold Control and Shift, you can add things. You can add to the current selection. So just regular Shift, like if I hold Shift and I do a drag select, I'm going to deselect, basically just inverts the selection, whatever the selection state was. Uh, so it is better to use a Control if you want to do a, a drag. And I think I'm actually going to, well, it doesn't probably make too much difference. I'm going to go ahead and leave that little triangle there. We're going to get rid of it. But for now, I'm just going to delete those faces in there. And we'll do uh, some kind of a bridging operation, but I'm going to hold off on that until the next video when we will continue this process.